ladies and gentlemen, um, this is a uh, to the reorientation event for political science students. This is the first year we've held it. We'll talk a little bit about the nature of the exercise, then I'll introduce you to our first set of speakers, uh, and then we'll spend, and then each of them will speak to up for up to 20 minutes, and then we'll have a kind of panel discussion uh, for the rest of the, our first hour. And of course, as you can tell from the outline here. Uh, for the rest of the t your time this afternoon, we're going to be breaking into three uh, workshops, which I think will each be quite valuable for, for you, and I'll be dropping in on each of them as well. What is this all about? Uh, the University, the Faculty of Arts and Sciences has a STEP program, uh, which is uh, a program designed to help undergrad students feel like they're part of an educational experience, something more than going to class, writing essays, getting your marks, going home. Um, that it's connected to other parts of your life, and also that, in some sense, um, there's, a, there's an orientation to your career and to your lifelong project. What is this all about? How does what, what I'm doing in the classes I take every year and the assignments I, I complete, how does that relate to, uh, to other things in my life? How do I orient myself in those terms? That's the, that at least is the reorientation, is at least the theme of one part of the STEP project and of the part that, uh, that this uh, exercise this afternoon is sponsored under. It's reorienting yourself. Most of you will be second year, how many of you are second year students? How many of you are other years? How about half and oh, okay, half and half. Well, usually people declare a major or a specialty or a minor uh, in their sec at the beginning of their second year, but you can de declare them, of course, at other times as well and uh, we're glad you're all here. Uh, so having started university a year ago or before that uh, and taken a bunch of courses, now you're in a situation where you've chosen our department, and we're really happy about that, uh, to, do a, uh, to do your specialty in or a major or a minor. And uh, we thought this exercise to do this afternoon and then the social you're gonna be going to tonight, which uh, this evening, which is sponsored by the Undergraduate Political Science Association, would help you build those other linkages to other things going on in your life uh, and also to your to your later career activities and also pick up some from you some useful skills so the three uh, workshops this afternoon are in writing and research the core elements of your um, academic exercise but also will be relevant for everything else you do in, in life and then also one on careers okay the first part uh, we're, that we're, we're having this afternoon is um, a more general starting point I'm going to, we're going to have three speakers, uh, and I'll introduce each of them briefly, and then each of them will speak for some time, or a little while, and then we'll have a bit of a discussion. The first speaker is, will be Professor Lou Pauley. He's the department chair. Um, he's a longtime member of our, our department, specialist in international political economy. Department of 65, 70 faculty uh, across the three campuses, maybe 50, 45 of those are downtown. Uh, a massive undertaking to be chair of our department. Uh, he's going to talk about the, talk about the discipline or, or being, a, being a studying political science at, at U of T. The other two speakers in our first session, uh, Barbara Dick is the first. And Barbara Dick is uh, Assistant Vice President Alumni Affairs. She has a career at U of T. She did a political science degree. She's going to talk about what it's like to um, have had that experience of having, having a political science degree, and looking back on her experience, and well, she'll tell you from there what she wants to say. So somebody who's, who's, uh, who, who's gone through political science and is now looking back at the experience and its value to her. And the third speaker is Delilah Bichik, uh, uh, who is uh, a fourth year student in political science, and she's going to look at a shorter time horizon. She's still in political science as an undergrad at U of T, and uh, she's going to talk about what she might have done differently, what she really liked, and whatever else she wants to talk about. Okay, so first of all, Luke. Thank you. Luke Thank you. Uh, you know, this is a great idea. It's an experiment. Uh, there are, um, there were a lot of people um, uh, invited, and uh, 80 responded, and then the weather turned beautiful. So your job is to um, uh, take in as much as you can, but then share what you learn with as many friends as you can. Not necessarily from the political science department, but uh, let's uh, keep the attention on political science for today. Uh, and uh, and uh, 
department website will uh, will uh, will have uh, our remarks uh, online for for a little while, so that you can uh, recommend that people go there if you think this was a valuable experience. Now, before I talk uh, very specifically about the department, and I do have a couple of very specific uh, bits of advice for you. Uh, I want to put it into a larger context, which is the context of the University of Toronto. Uh, and it's the context of a very large university, as you know. It's a context where most people are overwhelmed during the orientation uh, period during the first year, don't really retain much. Uh, it's a context where actually now that you're here for, for a year, you can start to actually put some practical um, uh, steps into place that will make this uh, a great place for you and a place that you'll remember and a place that, uh, uh, that uh, you'll send uh, your friends and your children to. Two stories. My wife and I were at a party about three years ago in Toronto house party. And I met there a young woman who um, had just graduated from the University of Toronto. And uh, she was a little bit shy, but we started to talk a little bit. And I said, so are you finished at U of T? And she didn't know who I was, right? She didn't know where I worked. And she didn't know my department. Uh, I said, so you finished at U of T? Well, what did you study? She said, uh, political science. Oh. Well, how was your experience? She said, mm, not very good. He said, uh, you know, uh, I said, what was, what were the issues? She said, well, um, classes were very big and, uh, and I didn't have a lot of fun. And, and then I said, so, do you remember the names of any of your teachers? She said, no, a couple of them were pretty good. But I don't remember them. I don't remember their names. And they said, so just tell me, what, what was your daily experience like? She said, well, I lived at home. Uh, I went into university when I had classes, which were two, maybe sometimes three days a, a week. Got on the subway, went to the university, attended my classes. And I said, then what'd you do? Well, I came home. So I said, you know what? I think I see the problem. And then I explained what my uh, profession was and where I worked and uh, specifically how happy I was in the political science department. And this was before I became the department chair. The student number, second story, another student. A couple of years before this, the student was uh, living at home. Nothing wrong with living at home, especially in an expensive city like Toronto. Uh, and uh, if, if, given, given all the other um, stresses and strains that people are dealing with, uh, if you have the opportunity to save a little money, why not? This student lived at home. But this student, I, I got pretty close to him because he took a fourth year seminar with me. We got to know one another pretty well. He um, didn't spend any time at home. He slept at home. And, and he, I said, you know, when, I, when I, uh, we had a very similar conversation, I, I asked him what his daily life was like. He said, well, I, I get up in the morning, I come to the university, I spend the whole day at the university, five days a week. So what do you do? He said, well, I have some pretty good classes, but I don't spend a, more time than I need to there. I'm very busy at Hart House. Um, the, he was in fourth year, he said he was the head of the debates club, and uh, he was very active in his college, which was, as I recall, University College. And he was involved in a couple of other activities. Uh, he was a very outgoing person. He was not shy, but he was not um, uh, annoying. He was, not a, he was not overly assertive. Uh, he was... Uh, somebody who just grabbed life, built networks, made friends. Now we can't claim credit for all of this, but I think a couple of key faculty members probably did make a difference. 
he went on and, and he, he went on to leave the department and uh, uh, won a Rhodes Scholarship, went to Oxford, uh, came back here, went to law school, and he's now uh, got a pretty big job in, uh, in Ottawa. Now, what's the difference between those two students? Uh, one took advantage of all the resources that are available at U of T, and the other didn't. Now, uh, in, now in very practical terms, it, whatever department people are a part of, how many, you're, in, you're now in second, some of you I think are probably in third year, right? Some of you in third year, starting third year? I'm not gonna put you on the spot. But I've been here for 32 years. Uh, like everybody else, I'm in my office for two hours a week, at least, with an open door for the students. Now, most of the time, except around exam time and term paper time, I sit there by myself. You know, I'm, maybe I'm not the nicest guy in the world, but you know, I'm not that scary. Well, I don't talk to my wife about that, but, um, but I, think that, uh, I think that is the case. Uh, now, of the students who have come to see me in those 32 years, usually around exam time and term paper time, how many have asked me, you know, Professor Pauli, uh, I'm interested in this field. And next year, I want to continue in uh, this field or that field within political science. What courses should I take? What's your advice? Two people. Two people. Even after, sometimes in an undergraduate class, I'll have a discussion just like this at the beginning of class. Right? Two people. We will always tell you. Look, this professor is here next year. She is a star. I know you're not particularly interested in that subject, but take that subject with that professor because I know, I happen to know that that professor is on leave the next year when you graduate. So it's now or never, don't miss her. Things like that. Only two students have asked for that advice. Now I have willingly given that kind of advice uh, even when not asked. But that's just a little hint of what I'm talking about. And you already know, especially if you're, you've been here for at least a year, this is not a place for shy people. If you are naturally shy, you've got to grow out of it. You've got to force yourself to be assertive without being obnoxious. You've got to force yourself to go visit a professor, even if you think she or he is slightly intimidating. And you'll find that they're probably a little more relaxed in their offices. Now, don't go every week. Uh, have a little bit of an excuse. Don't expect to spend too much time. But if you have specific questions, like the one I just asked, there's not one colleague in the department who would not answer those questions for you. You know, and now, don't necessarily listen to the advice of one person. Get advice from different people, but at least get the advice. Now, secondly, and this is, this is not to do directly with our department, this university, and by the way, faculty have the same impression when they first get here. It's, a, it's an overwhelming place. People are nice, but it's very easy to get lost. And yeah, because it's very big, it's a little bit bureaucratic. So what you have to do very often, in addition to finding a friendly professor, is be nice to the staff and ask the staff, like uh, Liz and Lauren, who run our undergraduate program, they are fantastic people and tremendous resources. They will help you solve your problems. They will help you find your way through our sometimes very complicated bureaucracy. And if it's possible to get an exception to a rule, which it very often is, uh, they will help you. And the faculty will help you too. Uh, so, uh, and our department actually is famous for this. Uh, aside from my friend, I would say my friend, the first friend in that first story, uh, it, it was, was not a, a representative sample. But I think the, the uh, pattern that she fell into is a pattern that's very easy to fall into at the university and in our department. We are, the, in terms of undergraduate specialists, majors, and minors, we are in the top five 
five or six. It bounces up a little bit, you know, here and there every year. There's little changes, but we're a, a very large department. It is very easy to get lost. Don't get lost. It's your responsibility. We will help you, but it's your responsibility. It's your education. This is not high school. It's your education. So if, if any of your friends have a story like my first friend, at the end of four years here, it's their fault. Now, what's on the other side of it? The other side, outside of our classrooms. Take advantage of all the opportunities. Now, political science is very well positioned to, uh, to point you to, and actually there's kind of a natural synergy with lots of the social activities at Hart House. Many of them are often directly connected with our courses. Um, uh, college programs, often very directly connected with our programs. Get involved in your colleges. The fact that people don't take advantage of their college for whatever reason, they only register there. Again, that, that's mostly, uh, 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 that, that is a readily resolvable problem, mostly by not taking no for an answer and getting to know people. Um, and there are a couple of college programs that are very, that are direct outgrowths of our department. At least, the, let's say the, the joint program, for instance, is called International Relations. It's half history and half political science. It is not a program on its own. It depends on political science to, to run. There's, uh, there are other programs across the, across the uh, university where we have some natural connections both to curricular programs and to extracurricular programs. Take advantage of those, uh, of those synergies. I mean, if you're interested in a political career, for instance, in the long run, get involved in the debate club. In, in, in various debate societies, at colleges as well as at, at, at Hart House. It'd be a very useful tool. Just getting up and learning to speak in front of a group is something you can walk away from the university with. And, and you know, you don't pay for that. It's outside the classroom. It's, it, it's something, it's a resource that's there for you. Just do it. Now, political science lends itself naturally to these things because you've probably already discovered that we are naturally interdisciplinary. Inside, one of the reasons to major in political science, a choice that you've already made, is that it's not a narrow discipline. Uh, as a matter of fact, there's a huge debate, even inside our department. Is it really a science? Well, first of all, we can have a long debate about what we mean by science, and what does it take to be a science. But let's forget that for the minute, for the moment. At the core of our field is the study of politics, which Harold Glasswell, a famous um, political scientist uh, who died many years ago, said is the study of who gets what, when, and how. Now, just to get to the, to the essence of that, you need to be interdisciplinary. So in our department, you need to start in, uh, with a whole group of, of courses and a whole group of colleagues who in other universities are actually housed in, located in, a philosophy department. By majoring in political science, you actually get to do an automatic double major in philosophy and empirical politics. All you have to do is take advantage of it. I don't know what the number is now. Maybe a third of our colleagues are political theorists, which means well, if they're not officially political theorists, they're unofficially political theorists, which means they're political philosophers. And they are, you know, the, uh, the adjective world, uh, world class is overused. These are first class people. These are people who win the, the biggest prizes in the world in their field. They're first class people. And because a lot of them are Canadians, now they're not all Canadians, we have a big well, global department, but because they're Canadians, you know what? There's something they don't brag about themselves. And they are, you know, they are just usually a pretty approachable people. But make no mistake, outside of the university, out, outside of Toronto, in the global arena, they're world famous. Everybody knows them. I'll give, just give you one example. Joe Karens uh, just uh, won the biggest prize 
from the biggest political association, political science association in the world, for his new book on the ethics of immigration. Uh, so, what I, I I really would like our students to broaden out, and they can they can broaden out naturally in our department by starting with philosophy. So at least a couple of courses in political theory, which will count towards your major or, or your specialist program, or your minor. And then the choice of uh, various empirical applications, uh, Canadian politics, American politics, comparative politics, international relations, which is a pretty broad program these days, now encompassing most of my colleagues in international relations happen they're still political scientists, but they happen to have their offices in the Monk School of Global Affairs. They still teach undergraduates. Uh, they're, they're part of us. This uh, public policy, the School of Public Policy and Governance, just the same. They're really political scientists masquerading as uh, members of, the, uh, of, a, of a public policy professional school. They still teach undergraduates. They don't all have to be here in Sydney Smith for you to have uh, access to them. So what, what fields did I miss? International relations, comparative politics, uh, Canadian politics, and uh, the specialized programs like uh, ethics. Center for Ethics in, uh, at Trinity College is not just for Trinity students. It's uh, mostly staffed by political scientists, and it's open to you. Now, by the way, all of those venues I just mentioned, just to give a few examples, run an active series of programs, seminars, workshops, conferences. There. Now, it's not easy to find out about them. You have to look at websites. You have to keep your eyes open. You have to keep your ears open. And sometimes they're marketed pretty well on, on little devices that you check regularly. Uh, but sometimes not. Those are all open to you. You're welcome to attend. You think, oh, famous professor or General Dallaire coming to the monk school. Uh, I shouldn't go to that. I'm just, a, I'm just a new undergraduate. Baloney. He's here for you. He's here for you. So actually, when I go to those events, and I see all the events very often, alum are welcome to attend. The alum, especially the retired ones, have a, have a little more time. Uh, so they will often attend uh, uh, events like that. But when I look, uh, look out at the audience and I see the average age is 55, I say, what's going on here? Where are the undergraduates? It's mostly for the undergraduates. The undergraduates are the essence of the university. All of these facilities, all these resources, all these seminars, workshops, et cetera, they're here for you. And they're voluntary. By the way, this friend, this young friend, a uh, former student, who, who did uh, win a Rhodes Scholarship, what were the key, the key moments for him? Going to events like these uh, that I just mentioned, meeting somebody, getting to know them. One thing leads to another, and um, it's about networks. My son uh, didn't graduate from our department, but he studied political science. The, ac the acorn didn't fall very far from the tree. Uh, his third year, I want to em emphasize this, in his third year he did a semester uh, abroad. Uh, and uh, in, after his fourth year, uh, he did an internship uh, in Washington. Both of those uh, opportunities led him to his career. People he met at conferences. He's now uh, working on a, a PhD in nuclear security studies at MIT. What opened the door? A conference he went to as an intern in, in Washington. What led to the internship at Washington, in Washington? His third year abroad, his one, his one semester program where he met somebody he actually was in a course with, uh, with a, um, a retired diplomat who opened that door. Uh, uh, what encouraged him to, to uh, take the opportunity for a third year abroad? 
not me. Because he's in my field, you know, he needs a father, not a professor. So I've kept, a, you know, it's, it's up to, it was up to him to uh, find his own opportunities. And he did. Now he's not, you know, he's a nice kid, but and things kind of did fall into his lap. But you know what? Uh, just because he was in the right place at the right time, because he put himself there. And he, he majored in the right subject, I have to say, as a professor and not a father. <laughs> Uh, okay, what else? Uh, you see, it's not hard for me to go 20 minutes, but I'm going to I'm going to end, uh, end with uh, with this. Um, what about afterwards? But political science is a pretty good major or specialist program for uh, opening doors for afterwards. Most of our students, just like me, I don't know about Rod. Maybe he knew what he wanted to do from uh, from the get go. I certainly did not. Um, political science leaves lots of doors open. You know, when my son was in, the, in, in his program, uh, and it was during that third year abroad, uh, he met, uh, uh, he met a, a government official. And you know, he talked to him about, you know, as he was talking about this fellow's career path, I overheard the conversation. I could, you know, I obviously knew uh, where he was coming from. Uh, and the, com the conversation was, was like this. You know, if I'm interested in a career like yours, uh, what should I do? And the official said, well, I'll give you one little bit of practical advice. These days in government service, and a lot of our students are at least thinking about public policy or even you know rather working in an NGO, some kind of uh, some kind of a position in the new governance structures in our globalizing integrated world, and interested in kind of policy sorts of issues. He said, "Government service these days is not exactly a, a straightforward 35-year career." Get on the elevator and, and, and escalator and move and move up in lockstep fashion. It doesn't work like that. People work for a couple of years, then they go out and do something else, then maybe they come back, then maybe they work in a political campaign. Political campaign works, and they get invited back into government service. So the question is, what's your fallback for the times when you're not in government? If you if you're if you're not. Uh, uh, in, in government service and on a straightforward career path. And as he said that for most people he knew it was at a high level, people who were thinking about graduate school, it was law school or some kind of professional school like the Monk School of Global Affairs, Kennedy School of Public Administration, right? Which could lead either to kind of an academic career or running something outside of government for a while and then going back into government service. Well, my son decided he didn't want to go to law school. A lot of our students decide they do want to go to law school, and it is a good fallback. And of course, political science is kind of the classic preparation for law school. Uh, but it's not the only track anymore. And I think it leaves a, a lot of, as you're choosing your courses in uh, especially third and fourth year, uh, keep that in mind. Keep in mind the, uh, the idea that you might not want to go to law school, but you might want to go to a professional program. And therefore, you need probably to broaden out a little bit, because you can't quite anticipate what, uh, what the future is, is going to hold. So you take some courses that are maybe uh, uh, a little broader than you might have, uh, have, uh, have uh, anticipated uh, when you started the program. Uh, and also take advantage of are two, two last things. International opportunities. It's the name of the game these days. You've got to get out of Canada to come back. You've got to have a little bit of experience in the world for the kind of the most attractive careers that I've seen our students pursue. Take advantage of international opportunities like you know, we, we will have these, this uh, kind of information available in, uh, in the department, but the International and Research Information Fair, maybe uh, 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 others will be talking about this, October 30th, Sydney Smith Lobby.
from 11 to 4. International Student Exchange Fair, November 6th, 11 to 4. Cumberland House on St. George Street. The Global Perspective Symposium, November 11 to 13, noon to 6.30, at various locations across the campus. Uh, if you can, free yourself up for just, uh, even it could just be a summer experience. And since we now have May, June, July, and August, free of class, unless you have to take a summer course, you can take, you can do a kind of uh, visit abroad without um, compromising the courses that you're, uh, you're planning to attend. Do it if you can, even if you have to borrow a little bit of money. Um, uh, and and the, the last thing is um, uh, this basic idea, again, of matching what you're doing in the classroom with experiences outside the classroom. It's really important. The people are going to help you open the door uh, to a future career. You'll probably meet outside the classroom, somewhere at the University of Toronto, if you keep your eyes and your ears open. And our department will provide these opportunities. Have a good look at our website and take advantage of the wisdom of our uh, staffers uh, as well as uh, uh, professors. Thank you very much.